Mountain Circle a while back, and a friend of mine, Wynn, was there. And the look on her face when I said pushing that cow over was priceless. I think she felt worse for that cow <laughs> than I have ever felt for any farm animal in my life. <laughs> and, and I knew I had a winner there. So. <laughs> and his handle is Pig Farmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, we don't need to get into that, do we? Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Email is a uh, pig farmer junior at Yahoo. If you want to drop me a line and say hi, you're welcome to. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to play a song off a self produced CD I just released in January, and I think I've sold five or six copies of it, so I appreciate the five or six uh, mostly family and a couple of friends here that have bought it. That was very, very greatly appreciated. Um, it is available as a digital download. Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, so at tcelliot.bandcamp.com, you get a free download so if, if you're interested in it. Um, but as I mentioned, I don't do very much uh, the humorous stuff. At least I don't know any of the humorous songs that I've written, or they're unintentional. I try to be serious. But uh, So I'm going to sing one of the songs off the album. Uh, it's called uh, One More Time. It is on the CD, um, and if you buy it out there, all the proceeds go to... Um, mobility cards for kids. So. Now I'm sitting right here wasting time trying to find the nerve to call. I somehow try to tell you I'm sorry for it all. And if you ever get the feeling, if you ever get the urge, I won't mind if you forgive me one more time. Well, I saw your picture on the wall when I told your folks goodbye. I let them know it's all my fault that we couldn't make it right. And if you ever get the feeling, if you ever get the urge, I won't mind if you forgive me one more time. And I can't promise you romance But if you stick with me I'll give you my word I'll treat you just like you deserve More precious than all the jewels on earth If you forgive me one more time
thank all the performers so far. We've had a variety of uh, styles and uh, so on. But the purpose of tonight's uh, program is the uh, uh, Mobility Worldwide project. And uh, so we want to show a couple of uh, videos about mobility worldwide and the uh, effect that it has on the, the carts have on the uh, recipients. And while that's getting set up, by the way, you may know that I have a uh, different costume on than uh, initially. Yeah, I don't know where the wardrobe people were uh, at the beginning of the show, but. Uh, they were at the clinic for the blind. <laughs> uh, the clinic for the blind. Okay, anyway, so uh, I have my uh, uh, official Dr. Cordate uh, costume on now. Oh, uh, oh I wake it up. This? Who's the techno wizard here? Is anybody under 50 here? <laughs> oh. You've got one. <laughs> Why is it not doing that? No life can be without its trials and sorrows, and each soul search. A different pathway takes, and on that journey, I hope for tomorrow, and yet I ask, why my God forsakes, for I did not choose this life to which I'm bound and I'm so weary of crawling on the ground and so I weep but no one hears me cry but faith I keep when others wonder why and i lie still for my heart troubled be for who will be there to stay a while with me And then you come and lift me home. You come, a simple gift you give, a simple gift so I can simply live. And so I smile, for I have seen your face faith like a child, and the wonders of grace, my answered prayer, and my heart joyful be, for you were there to stay a while with me. And you will be there to stay a while with me. It started here. So then I'll tell you this way. Are you done recording? Okay. Are you done recording? So, I filled uh, because, the card. Uh, now I'm doing it on here. I advertise these shows as a 
musical comedy science uh, review, I always like to start out the second half uh, with a little uh, today in science uh, and just uh, because it's science. Okay, so uh, on March 10th in 1982, a uh, syzygy occurred. Uh, so I, well, I was one of my favorite uh, English words is syzygy. Syzygy. S Y Z Y G Y. And that an, was an alignment of all nine planets on the same side of the sun. At that time, there was nine planets. Uh, one of them, of course, has been uh, degraded uh, since then. Uh, so, uh, syzygy, remember that word. Uh, all nine planets aligned on the same side of the sun. And you also note in the word syzygy that the Ys are, are aligned also, so it's kind of a syzygy, syzygy. Okay. Oh, uh, where's, the, where's the can of ready with? Really? Yeah. On, on this date, March 10th in 1955, U.S. patent number 2 million, 704,172 was issued to uh, Aaron Lappin for his invention of the dispensing valve for gas pressure containers, hmm. uh, otherwise known as Ready Whip. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we may have a demonstration of that. You know, I would, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, anybody want to demonstrate how to properly use this? <laughs> Is there a volunteer? Win, win, win. I was somewhat astonished to find out that there's only been one death recorded from the use of a and several injuries. And I would thought there would be a lot more from people uh, people choking to death on it. But, uh, uh, it was actually that the can exploded. Oh. Uh, shrapnel from the can uh, severed uh, uh, artery, and uh, the woman died. And I was, you know, I was just signing you know. But uh, this has saved a lot of uh, trouble for people because it, it takes a lot of arm work to uh, whip cream, you know. <laughs> okay, on uh, this day in 1876, Alexander Graham Bell made the first telephone call. He was, he was wandering around his laboratory there in uh, uh, Philadelphia going, Watson, can you hear me now? Watson, can you hear me now? <laughs> and on this day in 1797, the first American scientific paper on paleontology was presented to the American Physio Philosophical Society, uh, entitled A Memoir on the Discovery of Certain Bones of a Quadruped of the Clawed kind. And it was written by uh, one uh, Thomas Jefferson. Now, uh, Jefferson uh, was an intellectual giant. Uh, he said so himself many times. Uh, a competent astronomer and mathematician, he uh, precisely calculated the solar eclipse of 1778, which was in the midst of the uh, American Revolution. Uh, he was considered an expert in anatomy, physics, botany, meteorology, civil engineering, architecture, and he could read and write Greek, Latin, Spanish, French, and Italian, yeah, and English. And uh, the bones that were the subject of his scientific paleontological paper were of uh, megalonyx, an extinct giant <laughs> sloth. Uh, Je Jefferson managed to parlay this uh, foray into the reality media of the day into a uh, vast uh, economic empire, uh, establishment of a university, and eventually presidency of the United States. Uh, Jefferson's uh, opponent in the election of 1800 was uh, the incumbent president, John Adams, who uh, thought Jefferson was unfit for the presidency and mocked him by calling him Mr. Mammoth, because of his interest in mm. uh, bones and uh, other paleontological things. Well, Jefferson responded by calling Adams a blind, bald, crippled, toothless man who is a hideous, 
hermaphroditic character with neither the force and fitness of a man nor the gentleness and sensibility of a woman. Oh, God. Yeah, you know, I say point for Jefferson on this one. Uh, and he added, uh, you know, my Mr. Mammoth is doing just fine, as evidenced by my six children, by my wife, and at least six or more children by various uh, slave women. Uh, okay. So, uh, we don't want the uh, math nerds among you to be uh, excluded from the uh, uh, concert. So, uh, next Wednesday, uh, March 14th, is National Pie Day, that is 314. And I have a song that I hope someday will be the national theme song of Pie Day. <laughs> It's three o'clock on the 14th, one lonely man stumbles in, then five more shuffle through the door, nine want two bottles of gin. They say, can you give us a number? We're not really sure how it goes, but it's long, no repeats, and it's still incomplete how it ends. Nobody. from uh, your high school algebra or geometry uh, class, uh, pi being the ratio of a circle circumference to diameter. Back off a little bit. Back off the mic a little. <laughs> and uh, I can hear myself. Okay. Where was I? Pi. Uh, uh, okay, so, and uh, you may have been required to use the uh, first three digits of pi 3.14 for some uh, calculations uh, along the line. So I'm just uh, giving you the uh, first 15 digits of pi so that you can do much more serious uh, calculations. There's no fraction bar with two integers that can give you this ratio. Of a circle circumference to diameter, it's irrational, you know. They say, Doc, we think this is fantasy, as they try to recall just why. And how they would use this number abstruse as the waitress serves them more pie. Yes, give us a number, piano man. 3.1415. Six, five, three, and five again. Eight, nine, seven, nine. Yeah, because uh, the this number and, and other common mathematical numbers are called irrational, which means that the numbers uh, following the decimal point uh, never repeat. There's no sequence of repetitions, and they just go on forever and ever and ever and ever. Uh, I'm just giving you the first 15 digits of pi. <laughs> now Paul's a polygon geometer who needs to calculate space for filling a jar of radius R and the volume his wife can displace. The waitress is practicing physics while the businessmen contemplate cones. They compare notes about Mandelbrot's and scalar curvature zone. Yes, give us a number, piano man. 3.1415, 9653, and 5 again. 8979. It's a pretty good number for figuring. 
And it's hard to see why we need to know pi to 13 trillion digits so far. Because 100 digits is good enough for the size of the known cosmos to be calibrated and calculated to the nearest micron. Pretty close. Yes, give us a number, pi anno math. 3.1415, and 5 again. 8, 9, 7, 43 digits of pi and in order to get out of here uh, you need to be able to recite at least the first 15 digits of pi. <laughs> Elsewise we're setting up a blood drive in the lobby of the building uh, three pint minimum. So pi or blood your choice. Okay. okay. So uh, now we have uh, William Haight who drove in here from was miles and miles away, <laughs> and that's <laughs> well, or all of us, that's why we're here. <laughs> I don't know if I can see that. Uh, oh, yeah, I need to be younger. <laughs> yeah, I think we can. Okay, let's get back up. Well, I'm going to do a, uh, something I don't usually do. Uh, this is a political song. Uh, I guess I've been inspired by it. Anyway, this is called uh, Mike Pence. Did you sell your soul to the devil, Mike Pence? Did you look him in the eye and did he make you flinch? Is he slowly slipping it to you? Inch by inch, sell your soul to the devil, Mike Pence. Just a simple governor from a very simple state. He had a private email just like the Secretary of State. Nobody knew, no one took him to task. But unlike Hillary's, he's got hacked. You sell your soul to the devil, Mike Pence. Did you look him in the eye and did he make you wince? He's only slipping it to you. Inch by inch you sell your soul to the devil, Mike Pence. There you were at NATO, cleaning up Trump's mess. Every day doesn't seem your soul weighs less and less. Cause there you are on TV, taking Flynn's side. And then you're made the fool when you find out that he lied. You sell your soul to the devil, Mike Pence. Did you look him in the eye and did he make you flinch? Is he slowly slipping it to you? Inch by inch, sell your soul to the devil, Mike Pence. You say that you're a Christian, yeah, you say it all the time. But I don't see it, I think it's in your mind. If Jesus Christ came back. Well, I think that you would find he, he would not be happy. He'd be kicking your backside. You sell your soul to the devil, my pets. Did you look him in the eye? Did he make you flinch? Is he slowly slipping it to you? Inch by inch, you sell your soul to the devil, my pets. You sell your soul to the devil, my pets.
coming up. This is a brand new song. It's uh, literally only about a week old, maybe about 10 days, but anyway. Uh, kind of, it's a little bit, uh, it kind of goes along with this these days also. This is called uh, Rise Above It All. I wrote this uh, with Elizabeth Petty. somebody who is uh, not really grown up and would rather be out having a good time. It's, uh, it's called What Have I Done? In the deuce down the crows and calls, better sitting at home, the wife of John. Two little kids on the floor of all and the bill collector on the phone of calling. Whoa, whoa, what have I done? Trying to have a little fun. No prospects, I have none. I've won. Whoa, what have I done? House of Wreck, beautiful fall to get to work. Him and in a heart, get to work, but I just keep yawning. It's a beautiful day to be yawning. Oh, 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 what have I done? Trying to have a little fun. You know, prospects, I have none. I've won. Oh, what have I done? Your promises I skip. With the truth that I strip And your trust that I trip Nooses I shouldn't have slipped Whoa, whoa, whoa what have I done? Trying to have a little fun No prospects, I have none 
I've won Oh, what have I done? Those lips I should be kissing There's a love I'm already missing I swear, man, I was not just wishing But I gave it all up to go fishing Whoa, 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 what have I done? Trying to have a little fun And the prospects I have not, not won Oh, what have I done? Oh, what have I done? Oh, what have I done? Guitar less, vocals more. Yeah. Down on the guitar. <laughs>
look right up and take a look. Hit a tree fell in the brush. I set up with some disgust. I saw pink flowers crushed. I grabbed my hand and flower book. Took some time to take a look. Page turned to a vine with strings. Pot so plenty of bright green shade that was full of flowering peas. Peas of every kind of peas. Glory butterfly are a blaze everlasting. Perennial, squirmy, and what? Sensitive peas move at your touch. kind of maze. Glory butterfly are a blaze everlasting perennial scurvy and what says the bees move at your touch. But all these bees are really wings. A garden is where I can be. Look at flowers all the year as I will keep them from the deer and treat those bees like me. The garden was a lot to do. The pig, the snow, the clay, the bill, the weed, But eating peas I can I look real close at my lawnmower Chose not to at this late hour Flower book call from the shelf I clearly notice something else Many peas are beans My favorite food I was at ease <laughs> <laughs> They made you eat those mushy peas <laughs>
Next we have some uh, piano music from Tony uh, Lovin, and while they're getting set up, uh, you know, Julius Caesar walked into a bar and held up two fingers, and the bartender says, five beers coming right up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, a chameleon walks into a bar, and the bartender says, uh, if your wife calls, I didn't see you. I camouflage, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay, a bat walks into a bar. A bat walks into a bar and the bartender says, must be an echo in here. <laughs> okay, is it, is it getting late? <laughs> Are we ready? More bar jokes, a giraffe walks into a bar. The barker says, how about a long neck? Oh. Oh. I want to say something here if I may, Jeff. Sure. I just cast drove this thing, yeah. and I am truly amazed. I mean, I, you know, I'm kind of a statement machinery, but how much leverage there is in this thing. I would encourage some of you, particularly the, the, the smaller ones, the weaker in the arms, to try this thing, because it is truly amazing. You know, and it's one of those things where, you know, Talking about charities, I mean, I, I like tangible things, and, uh, and this is not a, a you know, a concept. this is a thing that you give to people, and, you know, I can't say anything good about it, so they haven't given already, give some more to me. And try the machine, try the machine. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, thank you for that, that uh, endorsement, you know, that uh, uh, we talked to the, uh, director of one of the organizations that we will be working with in uh, Kenya next month and uh, uh, she, she told us and, and this is an organization that has uh, has clinics they have uh, schools they have a computer technology uh, uh, school and they do uh, good work in uh, several different uh, towns in Kenya as well as uh, Nairobi the capital and she says nothing changes the life of a person faster than one of these cards. It's a, they get on the card and it just completely changes their attitude. That, there's a buzz in that speaker. Is there some way to... Yeah, I can turn uh, Doc's oh. mic off. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I found a pick. What's it look like? Yeah, your glass is wine. Very anonymous. That must, that's my speaker. Come right back to Doc into that little wheelie banger there. You know, I may have to get me one of those. Are they street legal? <laughs> Son of a gun. Can't use them in the States. Can't use them in the States. Well, let's make a street legal version. I'm about to make a version. Club. Yeah. All right, now, those two songs are now. This is something newer that I wrote. It was kind of... Ain't much there. The thing about all these old bluegrass songs and country songs, it's a little different than a city love song because if you meet the girl you love and it doesn't work out, you may have to date your cousins the rest of your life or move. <laughs> well, they returned my letter this morning. Stamped address, see unknown. 
It looks like no one could find you On East Allen Street in Tombstone Well, I drove you to Joplin to catch the bus Down Route 66 you were gone you said you'd rush home when the funeral was over For seventeen weeks you've been gone Up here in Hickory County Where the trees grow so thick and so tall When the sun goes down in the afternoon Then I've got no light at all Just a bachelor mockingbird's call Now, if you read your ornithology books, you'll find out, as a matter of fact, that the mockingbirds you hear the most are the ones that ain't got no mate, especially the males. So I'm encroaching on your territory, then, Jeff. Well, all night he'll sing out his memories until sun up I do the same. Stolen songs of the whipper will bluebird and dove While I sob and mumble your name Up here in Hickory County Where the trees grow so thick and so tall When the sun goes down in the afternoon Then I've got no light at all Just the bachelor mockingbirds call Without you, there's no life at all. <laughs> My name is Dennis Lane. Good to see you sometime. That changed. Do I have any? Okay, Thomas Edison walks into a bar and <laughs> orders a beer, and the bartender says, uh, "Okay, I'll serve you, but uh, don't get any bright ideas." <laughs> no. no. Okay, save me here. Uh, okay, a oh, tree walks into the bar, to a bar and the bartender says, I think you better leave. Uh, I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Second three. Almost. Oh, okay. I only have one joke left. <laughs> <laughs> Is it funny? Did I just say it was from that one joke? <laughs> Come on, dog. Go ahead. Who's the smallest in the audience? I wanted to try this dog old thing while Grant said nothing. Who's, who's the tiniest? No, I'm not tiny. He's muscled. I want to. This thing is just so wonderful. I mean, it is. I mean, isn't it great? And, uh, it's, I mean, this, this, this is for real. You do, if you know, you've ever had cardiac, cardiac uh, rehab, that's what they do. They have you grind one of them things around. Except you don't go anywhere. <laughs> as soon as I got on it, I was like, yeah, man, this is like cardiac rehab. I need to do this every day. Anyway. And, uh, there, that's a little better. So I got, I got one of these things with a stick shift and a floor and a floor. <laughs> For my last song, I'm going to get the bazooki out. That's it there. You can send me questions. You can email me at, at grant7witters at gmail if you want. Whatever you want to call it. What this song is about. Very, very many highs. Well, that's all right. I had too many highs. So this instrument's made in Raken, Romania. That's in the Carpathian uh, Carpathian Mountains. Um, it's technically in the Romanian part of Transylvania. I kind of think Romani built it, but I don't know. Doesn't matter. Uh, but this song is about the Ozarks, and uh, once you turn off 160 in Ozark County. You know, you're, you're on your own. It's go right at the big white oak. <laughs> oh, okay. Great. Thanks for that great information. So we're driving around kind of lost. We don't know what to do. The highway patrol's looking at a hope. I, I had uh, way, you know, shoulder length dreadlocks back then. My beard was 
quite a bit fluffier. We all went pretty wild in the car. And uh, uh, we made it to our destination and she wrote this song in the back seat of my Ford uh, Fairmont, maybe Escort, I don't know. I had one of them old station. Oh no, it's a Chevy Cavalier wagon. It's called One Day Today. Thank you. 